this video, we look at the epsilon n definition of the limit of a sequence. In the previous lessons, we observed that in some infinite sequences, as we move along the sequence, the terms of the sequence tend to approach a fixed value. This observation leads to the realization of the intuitive notion of the limit, which is a mere recognition of the observation. Let's further explore this notion. Let's begin by concentrating on a specific sequence. Consider the sequence given by a n equals 20 n divided by n plus 0.5 plus minus 1 to the power of n. Let's list the terms of the sequence. The first term is obtained by plug in 1 for n. The first term, a1, is 40. Plug in n equals 2, a2 is 11.428. Plug in n equals 3, a3 is 24. The table lists more terms of the sequence. Formally, a sequence can be defined as a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers. Therefore, a sequence can be shown as a graph. But the graph of a sequence is discrete. Let's look at the graph of the of a n. To graph a sequence, plot each ordered pair, n, a, n. Each point on the graph corresponds to a term of the sequence. The first term a, 1 is 40. This is shown by the point with coordinates 1, 40. The second term a, 2 is 11.429, this is shown by the point, with coordinates 2, 11.429, and third term a, 3 is 24, this is shown by the point, with coordinates 3, 24. The rest of the points corresponds to other terms. Let's begin the discussion about the limit of a sequence, by establishing an intuitive notion for the limit. Given a sequence a n, we say that the limit of the sequence is l if, as n grows larger and larger, a n becomes closer and closer to l. Let's re-examine the graph of a n. By observing the graph, we can speculate that, as n keeps getting larger and larger the values of a n gets closer and closer to 20. So we can postulate that limit of a n to be 20. Now let's go over standard notations and terminology used to describe the limits. We use the expression, n approaches infinity to describe the never-ending process, n, keeps getting larger and larger. We denote this in symbols by, n right arrow infinity. It is worthwhile mentioning that in this context, infinity is not considered to be a number and n never attains the value infinity. We use the expression, n approaches infinity to describe the never-ending process of n, keeps getting larger and larger. With these facts in mind, if the limit of the sequence a n is l, we denote it by, lim, subscript, n, right arrow infinity, a n, equals l. In the current example the limit of the sequence a n is 20. We denote it by, also, we should mention here that when we say the limit of a n is equal to l, in general, it doesn't mean that at some point a n will attain the value of l. It only says that as we move along the sequence by increasing n values a n will keep getting closer and closer to l. In the current example a n never attain the value 20. We can't find any value for n such that a n equals 20. Intuitive notions enable us to make observations and come up with speculations, but before accepting them as knowledge, they have to be analyzed and tested through a standard methodology. When stumbled with an intuitive notion, mathematicians scrutinize it to identify underlying constructs, then they mold it into a mathematical notion. Mathematical notions are conceivable by logic and proofs. Let's look at a more logically tenable classification that captures the intuitive notion of the limit. Given a sequence a n, we say that the limit of the sequence is l. If we can make a n arbitrarily close to l as we want for all sufficiently large n. To convince that this definition captures the intuitive notion of limit, let's look at the sequence given by a n. From the previous discussion, we know that limit of a n is 20. Therefore, we should be able to make a n arbitrarily close to 20 as we want for all sufficiently large n. We can describe the closeness of a n to 20 by the distance of a n from 20. 
Therefore making a n arbitrary close to 20 means that we can force a n's to be within any chosen distance from 20 for all sufficiently large enough n. To further explore this, let's look at the graph of a n. To begin with, let's try to force a n to be within 3 units from 20. The a n's that lies between the dashed blue lines y equals 23 and y equals 17 satisfy this criterion. Observe that all the a n's after n equals 14 fall within this region. So we can select n equals 14 as the starting point for the large enough n values. All the a n's after that falls within 3 units from 20. Note that, also, we could have chosen n equals 8 as the starting point for large enough n values, all the n's after that fall within 3 units from 20. It's not required to find the smallest possible n, giving exact cutoff point, any n value that force, all the a n's to be within the given region will work. The behavior of a n's before that is irrelevant. n equals 8 is the cutoff point as a n before that goes outside of the region. We can choose any value in the region and greater than or equal to 8 as our starting point for sufficiently large enough n. Any value in this region will force a n's after that to fall within 3 units from 20. We choose 14 for no special reason we could have picked any number in the region n greater than or equal to 8. We conclude that there exists a sufficiently large enough n value. Now, let's try to force a n to be within 2 units from 20. The a n's that lies between the dashed blue lines y equals 22 and y equals 18 satisfy this criterion. Observe that all the a n's after n equals 21 fall within this region. Therefore, there exists a sufficiently large enough n value which forces all a n terms after that to fall within two units form 20. Let's push further and try to force a n to be within one unit from 20. The a n's that lies between the dashed blue lines y equals 21 and y equals 19 satisfy this criterion. All the a n's after n equals 42 fall within this region. Therefore, there exists a sufficiently large enough n value which forces all a n's after that to fall within one unit form 20. We were able to find corresponding, sufficiently large enough n values for distances 3, 2, and 1. Can we find such an n value for any given distance? First, let's establish an important rule about sufficiently large enough n values. It will help when answering this question. The sufficiently large enough n value for a distance of 1 was n equals 42. All terms after a 42 lie within one unit from 20. Observe that all terms after a 42 also lie within two units from 20. Therefore also we could use n equals 42 as a sufficiently large n value for a distance of 2. We can generalize this result and claim that. Assume we have found a sufficiently large enough starting n value say n1 for a distance of d1. If d2 is greater than d1, the same value n1 would work as the sufficiently large enough starting n value for distance of d2. The sufficiently large enough starting n value for a distance of 1 was n equals 42. For any distance greater than 1, we can pick n equals 42 as a sufficiently large enough starting n value. Therefore, in our quest to guarantee that there would be a sufficiently large enough starting n value for each given distance, we focus on distances less than 1. In the original position of the graph, observe that a n lies in the region between blue lines y equals 19 and y equals 21 falls within a distance of 1 unit from 20. The chosen, sufficiently large enough starting n value 42, is shown by the red vertical line. We could reduce the distance from 20 by moving horizontal lines toward the line y equals 20. As we do so, the moving red line marks the sufficiently large enough starting n value for each distance. The a ends after the red line always lies in the required region.
Therefore, we can postulate that for each given distance d, there is a sufficiently large enough n value such that all a and s after that fall within d units from 20. This argument supports the claim. For the sequence given by a n, we can make a n arbitrarily close to 20 as we want for all sufficiently large n. And therefore, according to the new notion, it's reasonable to believe that the limit of a n is equal to 20. New notion of limit facilitates improved logical arguments. Also, it provides a better description of the way terms behave as we move along the sequence. Still, it's not rigorous enough to be used in proofs. The notions make a n arbitrarily close to l as we want and for all sufficiently large n are loosely defined and are open to interpretation. Let's tie the loose ends by replacing these statements with more rigorous statements that cause the same semantics. We already have all the ingredients, just have to connect them properly. Again, let's start by working on the concrete example, the sequence given by. For sequence a n, we conjected that we can make a n arbitrarily close to 20 as we want for all sufficiently large n. Let's examine this condition. We observed that by requiring a n terms to be within a chosen distance, say epsilon units from 20, we enforce a degree of closeness on a n terms. The epsilon controls the closeness smaller, the epsilon, the closer a n get to 20. The a n terms between the lines y equals 20 epsilon and y equals 20 plus epsilon lie within epsilon units from 20. Therefore, to achieve the required arbitrary closeness, we have to pick the terms that satisfy the inequality 20 minus epsilon less than a n less than 20 plus epsilon. The rearranging the inequality by algebraic manipulation. we get that the absolute value of a and 20 is less than epsilon. The new inequality refers to the same criterion. We already know that for a given epsilon, we can find a large enough n such that all terms after n lie within epsilon units from 20. Now let's list the epsilon n criteria for the limit of the sequence given by a n. For each epsilon greater than zero, there exits a number n such that n greater than n implies modules of a and minus 20 less than epsilon. We already provided arguments to support the claim that sequence given by a n satisfy this criterion. We will present proof establishing this claim later. Now, let's list the epsilon n definition of the limit of a sequence. The number l is the limit of the sequence a n if for each epsilon greater than zero there exists a real number n such that n greater than n implies that the absolute value of a n minus l is less than epsilon. The definition states that if the limit of a n is l, then given an epsilon, if we go far enough out in the sequence, all the a n terms will fall within epsilon units from the limit l fatus is given an epsilon we can find an n value such that all a n's after it will fall within epsilon units from the limit l in general n depends on epsilon the smaller epsilon is the bigger n is the farther out we must go this is a consequence of intuitive notation of the limit the n need not be the smallest possible one, any value will do, as long as, all, a, n, after it, falls within epsilon units, from the limit, l. For each epsilon, greater than zero, there are only finitely many sequence members, whose distance is more than epsilon units from limit, l.